Hello, boys and girls. How are you doing? Um, I hope you had a lovely week in school and all is going well. You know, uh, I know most of us have settled in. You've been there for a while and I hope things are going on well. And uh, it's another time for us to share the word of God together. And, uh, you know, I just want to remind us of what we are learning. And especially this month, uh, what we are learning, uh, it's about prayer. And this is what we are calling the African Children Prayer. You know, I would almost call it uh, Prayer Month. It's supposed to be African Children Prayer Day, which comes at the first Saturday of October. But prior to that, the whole month of September, we do lessons that are preparing us for that day. And so we'll be talking about prayer the whole month of September. Uh, two Sundays ago, we talked about the passion in prayer as we looked at the story of Jabez. And uh, this week we are doing the same from same story. We are continuing that. But last week also we talked about prayer, uh, not from specifically from that uh, place, but we talked about James chapter 1. Uh, six to eight, and we talked about how, you know, when we pray that we should not doubt, you know, and I, let me let me just read that verse again so that we can remember, how, for those who didn't go through it, and this is what he says, James 1, six to eight says, but when you ask, you must, you must believe, you must not doubt. People who doubt are like waves of the sea. The wind blows and tosses them around. A man like uh, that should expect nothing or receive nothing, you know, from the Lord. He can't make up his mind. He can never decide what to do. And that's what we talked about that verse, that we need, as we pray, we need to believe and not doubt. Because when you doubt, that means we are even not sure what we want. So we are going to God in prayer, but, uh, you know, we are not sure what we really need. But we need to be sure. And uh, even our lesson today kind of talks a bit more about that. And we're talking about purpose in prayer, purpose in prayer. But before we go to our lesson, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for just being with us, O oh God. And we just want to surrender ourselves to you, praying that, Lord, O oh God, that out of your love, out of your compassion, that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us, that you put, uh, purify us, O God, O Father. We ask that you forgive us where we have sinned against you. And Lord, may you help us to walk right with you. And even as we spend this month, you know, learning about prayer, we pray that you'll also help us to even learn how to pray. Learn to be able to communicate with you. And not only tell, uh, tell you the things that we feel are burdening us or the things that we are going through, but we'll also be able to listen to you speak to us because you speak in many ways. And one of the ways is just the, your word. And we, help, uh, we, we pray that, Lord, oh God, as we study your word, that you would help us, you know, to understand what we are studying. And when you speak to us through those verses because of situations that we are going through, that will be able to understand you speaking and be able to do that which you're telling us, oh God. So lead us today, even as we share through this lesson, may you help us, oh Lord, just to be able to understand and also to put it into practice. We thank you, we honor you, for we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, so we are continuing with our lesson on prayer. Uh... And today we are talking about purpose in prayer. Purpose in prayer. Yes, we go back to First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10a. You know the story of Jabez that we are talking about. But also today we'll add Matthew chapter 20, verse 29 to 34. Matthew 20, verse 29 to 34. And so I desire that at the end of this lesson, you know, as we, as we listen... You know, there are things that I would really love that by the end of this lesson that we can remember or we can understand is to know that prayer brings blessings and fellowship with God. That as we pray, God uh, uh, gives us blessings 
and we also have this fellowship with him. You know, that at the end of this lesson, that we should have confidence in God as we pray, because he will hear and he answers prayers. That as we pray, as we ask him for things, as we pray to him, that he hears and answers our prayer according to his will. And the last thing I need us to understand at the end of this is that when we seek God, that we should seek him to show us the purpose that he created us for. You know, as we pray, let's not just be a people who just pray for things, you know, just asking this and that and this and that, but also be a people who seek to know God's purpose for our lives. And that will help us to live better lives. So l- let, me, let me start by going through this uh, same poker story. You know, one day in a certain city, there were two men by the roadside. The men began to shout as people passed by. You know, imagine when you're just walking at the roadside, at the, uh, on the road, and you have these people on the roadside, you know, maybe two young men, you know, on the roadside shouting, you know, and you think, yeah, these guys are mad. Eh? <laughs> There's something wrong with them. But those around them, you know, kept telling them to keep quiet and stop shouting. And I think that's what exactly would happen if you were to meet people like that. People would be like, hey, you shut up, you know, just be silent. Yeah. Why do you think uh, these men were shouting? Because I didn't tell you why. Why do you think they were shouting? And that is what is our lesson today. It comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 29 to 34. And this is a story of the two blind men. And so our story was, it goes like this. You know, as they were just somewhere on the roadside, they saw Jesus passing and they started shouting to him so that he can heal them. And so some of the things that we learn as we listen to that story is that, you know, God hears our prayer. So as the two blind men, you know, saw Jesus, they knew who he was. And they call out because even the way he calls him, uh, call, uh, him out, you can tell he knew. They knew who he was. And he called him, son of David. They were shouting at him, son of David. You know, they knew he was a Messiah. They knew that he can do something to take care of the challenge and the problem that they had. You know, and they were sure definitely that he will answer them. He will take care of the situation. So the people, no matter how much they tried to silence them, then they refused to be silent. They continued and sh- even shouted louder, you know, and Jesus heard them and called them to come to him. Something else that we see is that it was a will of God for them to see. You know, they were blind. Why do we say this? Because in our Bible story, Jesus restored their blind, the blind man's sight because it was his will. Jesus always did what he knew was the right thing before God the Father. You know, the Bible tells us in uh, John chapter 5 and verse 19 that the Son can do nothing on his own. He does only what he sees his Father doing. What the Father does, the Son also does. So remember our story, you know, from last, uh, the last two weeks you know, where we started talking about the story of Jabez. And one of the things that we talked about is the meaning of of Jabez, which is pain. But despite of his situation, despite of him going through that pain, you know, he still passionately cried unto the Lord in prayer. Yes, he was going through a rough time. Yes, it is out of pain that his name is, but still... He trusted God and he passionately, you know, remember what we learned. He passionately prayed. So the Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10, that but Jabez prayed to God of Israel, bless me, God, 
and give me much land. Jabez called out on God just like the blind man did. You know, he called on Jesus. And the Bible says God heard him and he answered his prayer. You know, the prayer of Jabez was God's will. God had made a covenant, you know, earlier. God had made a covenant with the children of Israel through Abraham, and he had promised to bless Abraham and all his descendants. So this is where the promise is. As one of the descendants of Abraham, Jabez knew that he was praying according to the will of God when he asked for much land. Jabez could have asked for many other things to make himself rich and famous, but instead, he, according to God's will, promise and purpose. And this is why he stood out. You know, remember what we talked about. He stood out than the rest of his brothers because he knew God's purpose. He knew God's promise. And he did things according to God's promise. And remember one of the things also we learned from that story is that, you know, he was an upright man. He was someone who desired to do that which is good and right. And remember those things. Even as we go through all these lessons that we'll be going through, we have two more lessons to go through. Just remember that Jabez is coming from a point where he does good or desires to do good. He also is upright, you know. And the other thing is that he knew God and he trusted him. He knew that God will answer him. And that is all we are saying today, is that as we pray to him, that we should have confidence that he who we are praying to will hear and will also answer our prayer. And that's why we're talking about God's will. Because sometimes we pray things or we ask God for things that are not according to his will. And because also God knows what is best for us. Sometimes we ask something out of our selfishness. You know, sometimes we ask something because we have seen someone else with it. And we are thinking, why comes I don't have it? And so you start praying, not because you really, really need that, but because you also want to be like someone else. Sometimes we also, you know, pray for something and ask God to give us something, not thinking of the effect that it will have to people around us. I'll give it an example, like for myself. I'm married, I have children. You know, I may ask the Lord, I need a car. Yes, it is good, and I need it, yes. But sometimes, because I may not have enough resources to do that, I may end up buying that car, but my, then my family suffers because I'm not able to meet my obligations after I do that. And so sometimes I may pray and ask God to give it to me. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want to, but sometimes he may not give me at that time because he knows that will affect others. It will cause other issues. You know, you finally have the car, but I have problems that I need to still continue handling, and, and that will be stressful. There are times that God, you know, you pray to him, and he says, you know, wait. Wait. Because that is not the right time. It doesn't mean he will not give it to you. But he will give you at some point. Sometimes we have to go through a process. You know, just the, the way you're in school, you go, you learn, so that you can take up more responsibilities when you have understanding. There are things if you're told to do today, you might not be able to do them well because you're not trained. You don't have the understanding. And so if it is put on your hands today, then becoming a blessing, it becomes a distraction. And so sometimes God will say, wait. And sometimes he will just say, no, because it is not what you should have. Because he knows it will affect your life. So just know that as we do this, let's pray and ask the Lord to help us to be able to do this according to his will. You know, Jabez also knew that. And you knew it was the will of God, and he did it, as we have read. 
One thing else we, we will learn from the story of Jabez is that Jabez was very specific, you know, in his prayer. He didn't just pray things. He didn't just pray, you know, just God bless me and bless me and bless me. But he said, yes, bless me. But he also talked about specific things that he needed. And he says, just Jabez prayed that God will bless him and give him much land. You know, the word blessing means God's divine favor. So praying and asking blessing, he says, you know, it's God's divine favor. And so knowing the meaning of this name, Jabez desired God's divine favor in his life and not pain, as he was, his name meant. He also prayed for, uh, for God to increase his territory, to give him more land so that he could be a blessing to others around him. You know, the blind men were also specific in their request. Jesus asked them, you know, what they needed. And they just told him, we need to see again. So Jesus had pity on them, touched their eyes, and at once they were able to see and they followed him. And so one thing I would ask us as we learn through this lesson is that, you know, it's not just about knowing or learning how to pray, but also to be specific. Yeah? Yes, we are trusting God. We are praying to him according to his will, but you also need to be specific. You don't just pray, you know, a blanket prayer, but you be specific. If it is your schooling that you're talking about, you're praying to God about to help you. You know, you don't just pray a blanket prayer, but you tell God specific things that you would want him to do. You know, if it is in your schooling, you know, if it is a subject that you're not good at, you know, be specific. If you have any issues that you're praying to God to help you, just be specific and tell him what you need. You know, as we have learned from those two stories, that we need to be specific. Because sometimes we don't get answers to our prayers because we are not specific. Or even when God answers, we do not know he answered because we never ask a specific thing. Or the way he will answer that prayer. To us, we may not understand because we had no a specific prayer. So let us remember those things. And I'll repeat them so that we can remember that one, God hears our prayer. And two, that our prayers stand out when we are specific and according to the will of God. Three, that God's blessings and influence in our lives is for his kingdom. It's not just for us, but for so that he blesses us so that we can become a blessing to others, you know. And our memory verse for today comes from the book of First John chapter 5, verse 14. First John chapter 5 and verse 14 that says, we have courage in God's presence. We have courage in God's presence because we are sure that he hears us if we ask him for anything according to his will. I'll repeat First John 5, verse 14, that says, We have courage in God's presence because we are sure that he hears us if we ask him for anything that is according to his will. So that is our memory verse for, for today. That we, it encourages that to be courageous as we go before God in prayer. Why? Because we are sure that he will hear us and we are sure that whatever that we ask him, according to his will, he will answer us. So if you have that confidence, then you know that things will happen according to his will as he answers us. So I pray that um, all of us have learned something and that we can remember as we continue to pray. Remember, we are praying every day. We have a Bible verse that we have each and every day to pray. You know, read that verse every morning and pray. You know, a simple prayer. But you can also add 
other things as you pray. It also helps us to learn how to pray, you know, through the scriptures, through God's promises from his word. So let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and we honor you. For you are a great God who loves us so much, a God who hears and answers our prayers. And Lord, we thank you that even as we pray for different things that affect us as individuals, oh God, you know, as families, that Lord, oh God, that we can have that confidence, that we can be able to trust you with our situations, knowing that you will answer us, knowing that, Lord, oh God, that your blessings will overflow in our lives. Help us to remember that even as we lay our troubles and our situations before you, that we may do it according to your will. And that reminds us that, Lord, may you help us to be able to take time to study your word, take time to read the Bible, to understand what you're telling us, so that we know the purposes of our lives. And as we know the purposes of our lives, then that means we'll be able to know how to pray according to your will. And so that when you bless us, that we can also be a blessing to other people, that we will not become selfish with what you have granted unto us, but it will become a blessing to us and to those around us and even to many more that we will meet on our way. Lord, Thank you for who we are, for who you are. And Lord, oh God, we trust you for our lives. We trust you for our families, our parents, our guardians, our siblings. And we surrender them to you, Lord. You know what they are going through. Some may be sick. Others may be going through difficult situations. Others may be lacking one thing or another. Lord, we pray that you would speak into their situations, that you would speak to their needs and that, Lord, oh God, they will have a testimony of what you have done for their lives. That even as we go through this month of prayer, that Jehovah God, at the end of it, that we have testimonies of what you have done through our time in prayer. We thank you, we honor you, and we give you all glory and honor. For we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So, boys and girls, continue praying. Learn step by step. You may say, I don't know how to pray. Just that, even without one line of asking the Lord to take care of you during the day, you know, to thank him in the evening that he's taken care of you throughout the day and he's, you're back home, you know, and just pray that he would give you a beautiful night. You know, you start that way. Slowly, you continue adding words and learning step by step so that you can pray better each and every day. So God bless you and have a lovely time as you trust in God. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have for Him. This is the confidence. And this is the confidence that we have for Him. This is the confidence. And if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Anything according to his will, he hears us.